right-wing pseudo-intellectual Jordan Peterson was, uh, once again, you'll be surprised to know, crying on national television. But to be fair to him, I think that this is kind of a more valid reason for him to cry based on how he's being portrayed according to one director. So as Candace Ortiz of Mediaite explains, earlier this month, Olivia Wilde said in an interview that the villain in her latest film, Don't Worry Darling, a movie centered around an experimental community gone awry, was heavily inspired by Peterson. Quote, we based that character on this insane man, Jordan Peterson, who was the pseudo-intellectual hero to the incel community. You know, the incels, Wilde said. They're basically disenfranchised, mostly white men who believe they're entitled to sex from women. While elaborated that Peterson is someone that legitimizes certain aspects of their movement because he's a former professor, he's an author, he wears a suit, so they feel like this is a real philosophy that should be taken seriously. So that's some context in case you weren't familiar with what Pierce Morgan in this interview was referencing. Nonetheless, he's going to ask about this portrayal in the movie of him and watch his response. Film director Olivia Wilde oh. has a new movie out, which yeah. she says is based on you, this insane man, this pseudo-intellectual hero to the incel community. Incel being these weirdo loner men uh, who are you know, despicable in many ways. Is that you? Are you the intellectual hero to these people? Sure. Why not? You know, um, people have been after me for a long time by because I've been speaking to disaffected young men. You know, what a terrible thing to do that is. I thought the marginalized were supposed to have a voice. It's making you emotional to talk about that. Well, God, you know. It's very difficult to understand how demoralized people are. And certainly, many young men are in that category. And you get these casual insults, these, these incels. What do they mean? It's like, well, these men, they're, they don't know how to make themselves attractive to women who are very picky and good for them. Women, like, be picky. That's, that's your gift, man. Demand high standards from your men. Fair enough. But all these men who are alienated, it's like they're lonesome and... and and they don't know what to do, and everyone piles abuse on them. When she said that, Olivia Wilde, it, it stung you, didn't it? I saw the Oh, by that time, you know, that as far as, as criti critiques go, that was kind of low level. I mean, once I got painted as Red Skull, you know, magical super Nazi, that was kind of the end of the insults. There's no place past that. So... When Olivia Wilde made those comments, the first thing I did was go look at the preview for her movie, which I quite liked. I thought I would go see that movie, probably, and perhaps I will. It didn't really bother me. My, my family and I talked about it right away, and we were able to respond to it with some degree of humor. Look, I don't want to promote this idea that men are weak if they cry. I think that it's perfectly natural and human for men to cry. But... I would be lying to you if I didn't point out that I thought it was a little bit bizarre that Jordan Peterson cries so much for the dumbest reasons. My favorite is when he was talking to Andy No, and he was breaking down what he believed Antifa's philosophy was or something like that, and he just started crying, and it was really bizarre. In this instance, though, I can understand that if you are being portrayed as a villain in a movie, and it's kind of center centered around this persona that you built up, I think that's a legitimate reason to be upset, to be fair to him. But is this reputation earned? I would argue, yes. So in response, though, he says, um, he's been speaking to disaffected young men. It's very difficult to understand how demoralized people are. And certainly a lot of young men are in that category. So I agree with him here, right? So there are a lot of men who are younger, who feel alienated, who feel lonely. And I think that you should try to find a way to reach out to them, pull them out of this incel state and change their view of the world, change their perception of reality. But the problem is that he doesn't try to challenge their pre-existing beliefs. He just reinforces their beliefs, which is why he's so popular with them, because he effectively tells them what they want to hear. For example, in a 2018 interview, he said this, the left, he believes, refuses to admit that men might be in charge because they're better at it. Quote, people who hold that our culture is an oppressive patriarchy, they don't want to admit that the current hierarchy might be predicated on competence, he said. 
So he's promoting this idea to these men who he's reaching out to that men are inherently better than women in a plethora of ways when you have to challenge their beliefs. You're not going to help them get a partner if they're lonely if they believe that the women who they're trying to court are inferior to them. What woman is going to want to support a man with this belief? So, I mean, you're, you're, if anything, making the situation worse, but I don't think that it's wrong to reach out to these men. I think that there has to be some way to reach them and challenge their beliefs and bring them back into reality and let them know that they, too, can find love. They can be successful with women. They're not different than anyone else. But the problem is that their perception, their attitude, their stance towards women is probably what's making them less successful in that territory. Now, it's difficult to really capture the essence of Peterson's core philosophy by just listening to a couple of snippets. So what I'll do is I'll link you to a really brief three-hour video where some more news talked about Jordan Peterson and they dive into his core beliefs and it really gives you a better understanding of his guiding philosophies. And I think that this is really important if you want to understand what makes Jordan Peterson tick. But getting back to the clip in question, Towards the end, he said, oh, well, I'm totally cool with it, but it's a bit of a contradiction, seemingly, because you cried when it was brought up to you. So, Pierce Morgan is going to ask him about this. You know, you're clearly bothered. You're not cool with it if it's making you cry. And then he proceeded to cry even harder. You've been so controlled today, and yet in that brief moment, you got very emotional. Why? It's really something to see... Constantly, how many people are dying for a lack of an encouraging word? Mm. And how easy it is to provide that if you're careful, you know, give credit where credit is due. And to say, you're a net force for good if you want to be. Do you believe you're a net force for good? Net? Yes. In all the details? Probably not. You know, no one's perfect. So, people make their mistakes as they stumble uphill. So, he's not crying because of the portrayal of him in this film. Not that he's being portrayed directly, but the character is based off of him. But he's crying, according to him, because of the lack of encouraging words that lead to people dying. So this is him crying over sympathy that he feels for incels, presumably. I mean, he wasn't really clear there. I think he was crying because he's butthurt, to be clear. But this empathy that he wants all of us to feel for incels, he doesn't extend that to other people. He doesn't extend that to marginalized groups. He doesn't extend that to trans people. He goes out of his way to dehumanize trans people, to dead name and misgender trans people. That's Jordan Peterson. So his selective outrage for people who are kind of on the outskirts of society, this is why people don't take him seriously because he's inconsistent. Even though he views incels as the victims of society, a changing society, you know, in the midst of this gender liberation movement, you know, he views them as being victimized in a way by society. And this is why I think that he's popular because he has these self-help books, because even though you've been victimized by society, presumably these 12 rules for life will help you. Uh, but at the same time, when it comes to trans people, he doesn't view them in the same way. There's no societal reasons for the predicaments that they're in, right? This community community. They're just inherently flawed. They're trying to enforce their views on everyone else. So he doesn't extend that same sympathy to other marginalized groups. He can only and exclusively, at least that's what it seems, um, empathize with young white men. And that's why people criticize him. Because rather than reaching out to these young men and challenging their pre-existing biases, he just reinforces them and doesn't have the same courtesy for other groups in society. So this is why I think he's largely a clown. But I've got to say, him crying so frequently, it leads me to believe that behind the scenes, he's going through something. And when you're going through something, that's not to say that you can't help other people. But I mean, not necessarily somebody who I would recommend to my nephews as the self-help guru of choice, especially knowing his sexist beliefs. But whatever it is that's affecting him, 
you don't have to be in the spotlight 24-7, Jordan Peterson. You can take a step back. You don't have to do podcasts. You don't have to do interviews. You can take a step back and, and work on yourself. But he's not. And so he just continues to melt down in the public eye. And it seems like he's unhinged and unraveling. And in a way, I feel bad for him because, you know, you don't want to see somebody who's very clearly suffering, who's in pain. But at the same time, I don't feel that much sympathy for him just because he feels no sympathy towards trans people. You know, in the way that we may feel sympathy for him because he cries, he doesn't feel that same compassion for trans people. Up yours, up yours, up yours. Sons of bitches, bitches, bitches. Woke moralism, woke moralism, woke moralism. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. The genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.